in boating, there are those who enjoy the journey and those who enjoy the destination. If you're one of the latter and in the market for a 50-foot flybridge, then there is no other boat better equipped to enjoy the destination in this sector than the Galleon 500 Fly. Galleons usually have the edge when it comes to pricing compared to British and Italian competitors, but even so, this fully loaded demonstrator came in at £1.6 million as tested. Not cheap, but when you see what this thing can do when the engines are off and the anchor is down, it all makes sense. In this review, we're going to sea trial it and show you every nook and cranny of the deck's interior and machinery space, but there is only one place to start. I mean, this, this is what this boat was all about. This is what sets it apart from the competition. In fact, this model is the first model that Galleon introduced the balconies on, but they've also added some other innovations to just make it into one of the most spectacular main decks in the, in the class. And it starts with things that you expect to find, like a high-low bathing platform, but this one's got built-in steps, so as it sinks down into the water, the steps come down at the same time. And there are three options back here. You can have standard L-shaped seating, you have a crew cabin as well under here, or you can have this version, which has actually got a tender garage underneath, large enough for a Williams mini jet. But then you get this fantastic circular seating that swivels all the way around. It locks in place every 45 degrees. And you think, what a simple idea, but why has no one done it before? Because of course you want to be looking out over the water. Why would you want to sit looking into the boat like pretty much every other boat on the market? It's simple, it's brilliantly executed, and it works a treat. This waterside terrace here is just fabulous, and that really is only the start. If you step up into the cockpit, then you really feel the benefit of those terraces. They give you so much more usable deck space, and actually, Galleon put this on their bigger boats, but the smaller the boat, the more you feel the benefit, I think. And it's the way they haven't just sort of left them there, okay, the balconies are down, that's that. You've got additions like these ropes in here to add a bit of safety. Of course, if you leave them off, they're a great way for you to jump in and out of the water, get ready for water sports, etc. This table's an option as well. You've got a little coffee table this side, and you have the bench that is sort of inside, outside sliding windows so that you can sit here perched on the terrace looking out over the water. On the other side, you have the galley. Huge, great galley space, which has got a flip-up piece of countertop so you can create a proper bar over the water. This section here of counter, this actually folds down so you can close the window. You see the window here, so that just slides across to close this all off. But then you have it up like this, you have your bar stools, and I mean, I don't want the camera to go and stand where I'm standing. Just look at that view out over the bar. And I can come around here, you've got a couple of bar stools. What a place to be. It's fabulous, and there's more going on at the foredeck as well, so let's go and have a look at that. Between that cockpit, the flybridge and this foredeck, the living space on this thing outside is, is really spectacular and more clever thinking up here. Glazing here in the deck so you get loads of natural light pouring down into the VIP cabin. There's an actually opening hatch here as well. And then you've got this seating as a table that slots in. Both of these modules lift up as well. So if you're dining, you can bring them a little bit higher so it's a bit more comfortable for dining. You can walk behind them, but then the really clever bit is there's a button down here this happens on both sides. They slide forward and out, which creates a nice walkway from the foredeck down here onto the side deck. And then obviously you've got all these backrests popped up here, that side and on this side, but you can just lift this up and they just collapse forward and stow away like that, which is particularly important for these ones here because obviously they're right in front of the lower helm position. Again, the functionality, the versatility, absolutely brilliant. Now, the flybridge mustn't be forgotten because it's a really good space. And there are some things that are additional here that aren't part of the standard spec, like the fact these solid teak tables, which really helps us elevate the feeling of quality as standard, they're fiberglass. And yeah, I think the teak option's really nice. And look at the size of it as well. Really nice big dynamic, obviously, this opens up so it's almost twice the size. You've got a two-way backrest here, so if you're dining, you know, this is in sort of travel mode. If you're dining, you put it that way, you get two more people perched on there around the dining table. The hard top is an option. Most people will go for it. Uh, it's actually carbon fiber just to help try and bring the, the center of gravity down, not too much weight too high up top. If you don't have this, you have a standard aft facing radar and a bimini to give you some shade up here. 
See, I'm six foot one, headroom is a little bit tight underneath this fiberglass bit. You've got a fabric sunroof forward of here, which is a little bit higher, so it's not too bad in the middle, but here, taller people just be having to mind their heads as they walk through. Opposite, we've got a, it's quite a small wet bar, but it's well specified. And you can just open up one section just to get to the sink quickly. And then if you want the grill, you've got this second lid. So your grill, sink, fridge, everything you need up here. If you want to serve people up here, have a barbecue up here, then it's great. It's all here in one place in quite a nice compact little unit. Then of course you have your helm station. That's a double, uh, you know, well, well positioned. And then all the way around that, you have just pure sunbathing space. So it's a layout that works really well. It's got a little tight passageway down the middle here. So you have to sort of negotiate yourself around other people but actually the use of space is generally really good. The deck spaces then are very impressive, but what's the 500 fly like to drive? Now it may be lovely and sunny today, but it is January in the UK. It's only eight degrees, but I'm being brave to describe to you what it's like to be up here at this upper helm. Um, frankly, everything is a little bit far away from me for my liking. Apart from the throttles, they have put them on a little plinth down by my knee so I can reach them easily, but there's no adjustment on this seat. So everything, I'm just having to lean forward a bit, which is a bit frustrating if you're interacting with the helm regularly. On longer journeys, of course, you'll just sit back, you'll put it on autopilot, you'll barely be touching the steering wheel. But then the MFD is a really long way away. It's all touchscreen, obviously, it's the Rain Marine hybrid touch, so you've really got to lean forward to interact with that. What they could maybe do is put a panel of buttons down here so you can use it remotely from down there. That is being quite picky, but it's just something that I find quite frustrating when the main controls are such a long way. You know, everything is controlled through the two screens. You've got the Volvo Penta screen on one side, the Rain Marine on the other, and for them to be that far away, having the Volvo one a bit closer would be especially useful. That said, it's a very attractive helm station. The seat is nice and comfortable, and I've got a fantastic view, obviously, especially if you're coming port side too, if you're mooring from up here you can see right down here to the pontoon or the quayside. And the other thing is if you stand up, you can see the very end of the bathing platform. So if you're going in stern two and you want to do it from up here, then you can see its proximity to the quayside from this position. So that's really helpful. But anyway, the whole point of a flybridge is that it's got a nice warm helm position downstairs. So let's get down there. Now actually, in terms of ergonomics, this helm is much more like it. Everything is much closer to me. I can really easily interact with both of the main MFDs and then you've got the engine instrumentation here on the left-hand side. Now this is clearly borrowed, the moulding anyway, from a, a previous model because it has a space up here where the analogue dials used to be. But they sort of left it there because it's quite a useful tray to chuck your phone or some sunglasses because all you have Apart from that is one cup holder here to put loose items, so it's actually quite useful having that up there. But this is a really comfortable seated position. No adjustment on this seat, again, so it's not really comfortable to stand at this helm, but for someone of, of six foot, you've got a, a perfectly good view forward because this boat actually has a really nice level running attitude. I've got the trim tabs all the way up and have done all day. It's very, very calm, but it just runs nice and level, so I'm not really peering to, to see forward at our cruising speed, which is 22 knots. Now talking of that, let's, let's talk about engines. There are three shaft drive options, uh, Volvo Penta, all of them, a D8600, D8670, or what this has got, which is the D11725s. And then on a boat with a heavy spec like this one, this has got pretty much every option ticked for the Mediterranean, hardtop, air conditioning, passerelle. Obviously, it's got the platforms. It's a you know, heavy boat. I think certainly the extra oomph of these engines is really, really welcome. And what you find is that you know, this, this cruising speed of, as I said, 22 knots, where you've got a range of uh, about 250 nautical miles, from there, if you floor the throttles, there's noticeable punch still. And you jump up to the, the max RPM, which is about 2,550, and it'll top out at over 30 knots. We've got 32 knots today, which I think, you know, for this style of boat is more than enough for most people. If you opt for the smallest shaft drives, the, 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 the D8 600s, you're looking at sort of 28 knot top speed. So really flexible cruising with, with this engine option. It's about a 10,000 pound price hike over the middle engine. So well worth it in my opinion. IPS, you pay a significant premium for that on this boat and I really don't think it's worth it. It's so controllable, manageable at slow speed. You've got proportional stern thruster and bow thruster. Obviously you've got you know, twin shafts, so it, it's very maneuverable. 
unless you really, really want joystick control, then I think you're best to stick with the shaft. But the nice thing about this boat, and maybe the surprising thing, given you know how well spec'd it is, how heavy it is, it's really, really good to drive. The handling is so fluid, it reacts really nicely from the helm. It's, it's really sports boat-esque. It's not what I expected at all. And you haven't got that disconnected lightness that you sometimes get with IPS steering. There is feedback. It tracks really solidly, sits really, really nicely in the water, but it, it's lovely and agile and, and genuine fun at, at the helm. It, it's been a pleasure to, to chuck it around for the drone and for the, for the camera today. And I have to admit, I really wasn't expecting that. So that's a, that's a nice bonus. But if you just want to waft along at anything from 22 to 30 knots, it's really, really comfortable. Obviously, you drop the speed right down. It's got an 1800 litre fuel capacity. So the range just rockets really thoroughly impressed. If there's one downside to this lower helm, it's that this is a very, very large mullion here. You've got them both sides, but obviously you really notice that this side does create quite a blind spot on the starboard side. These windows do drop, drop down though, so you can always have them down and poke your head out. But yeah, that is, that is quite an intrusion. That is nice though on both sides. These massive great windows both drop down. Great for ventilation, no side door here, but good for communication with crew as well. So then when everything's all closed up and you're back in the marina, you're back into sort of regular flybridge mode. But obviously there's a bit of a difference because these are the balconies, there's no guardrail here, but they come up to a decent height so you feel secure enough moving around the boat. There's also a railing sort of up above your head that you can grab onto easy enough. It also means that there's nowhere to tie fenders, but halfway down there is a pop-out cleat so you can lash your fender onto there and just protect this area down here. And then you move around and you see you have these overheads as well because of course you can enclose this entire area too which extends the living space if the weather isn't quite as agreeable and inside the saloon oh, nice cold day like this it's just super welcoming it feels very very high quality this lovely dark gloss walnut is an option and it really elevates the the level of finish on this boat it does feel very high class indeed the aft galley obviously Really nice thick countertops. This boat's got the optional dishwasher, which is in the end here. And then over this side, you've got the fridge, which isn't enormous for a boat of this size. You know, one under counter fridge. Some people may be looking for a little bit more cooling space, but I should mention that there is a, an ice maker out here on this boat. It's an option, but there's an ice maker here. So you've got that there to supplement your fridge space. Now we saw this bench set up out on the water with the window open and it actually goes completely flat and becomes a sun pad if you want it to. Obviously in this mode, it's just another perch opposite the galley where people can take a seat and obviously it's nicely connected to the, the cockpit as well. We move through, there's a couple of steps here and then you're into the real heart of the saloon, lovely soft carpet underfoot. And again, it's that, that feeling of quality really, really hits you hard. You've got the TV that pops up from this little location here. The table is on a, high-low mechanism so you can drop it right down. There's some infills so it does make another berth or if you just want to lounge around watching the TV then you can drop it down and do that as well. One particularly clever detail here at the helm, now I've seen this attempted on many boats in different ways, trying to make something of the helm seat when the boat's not moving because if it's just sitting facing forward, if you're sitting around it's pretty useless because no one wants to be sat facing that way when you're just sitting around having a drink. But it's a very simple mechanism on this boat and it works really well. There's a little pin down here, you release that and then this just swivels around and it joins the rest of this bench and obviously and it's a really good position here opposite the main dinette. Really simple, really effective. And the other thing is, in this little settee here, these are actually freestanding. So you can move these around and these can be pulled up to the table as you can see. There's even storage underneath really clever stuff again it's simple but really effective and very nicely executed and something i do like is that they've put eye level lockers in this area you don't often see that they really have maximized every inch of storage space really important on a 50 footer people could be living on this thing for weeks on end in the season so storage space is paramount and there's plenty of it and that obviously continues down here on the lower deck and one thing you do notice as you go down to the accommodation it's actually quite a long run of stairs down there onto a, a deck that is set quite low. So there's quite a long passageway 
But the reason they've done that, of course, is to create headroom down here so that you've got sort of six foot two, six foot three headroom throughout in all three cabins. Now the cabin layout, obviously there's lots and lots of changes you can make in terms of wood and colors and upholstery. That really is up for grabs. Galleon are very flexible about that stuff. The physical layout is fixed though. So you have a VIP double forward. And then here on the starboard side, you have a bunk cabin, but it's a good bunk cabin. It's not just for kids. The berths are a decent size. Again, storage is really good. It's got a proper hanging locker. And something you notice on all these internal doors, A, is the quality of them. The wood finish is absolutely immaculate, but I really like these door handles as well. Really high quality, magnetic latches. Really, really nice stuff. But I think we should have a close look at the VIP because it's a really nice space. So this right forward here is the VIP cabin. First thing to note, headroom at the end of the bed is really, really good. And we saw the glazing on deck and you can see the effect. Well, you would be able to if it wasn't going dark, but having this much glazing here just draws so much more natural light than if you just have the one single hatch. This has got an escape hatch and you know that opens to give some ventilation as well, but this is all covered in blinds as well. So obviously you can, you can close it off um, when, it, when it's bright outside. Um, elongated, windows down each side obviously and opening portholes on both sides as well and the other really nice thing about this cabin is not only the amount of storage but the variety there's little cubbies there's hanging wardrobes either side there's excellent storage underneath the bed drawer storage so you don't have to lift up the mattress to get to it works really really well and the actual artificial lighting that we're benefiting from now is is excellent too you've got good variety as well spotlight indirect leds you've got the lamps at the top yeah, there's a lot going on in here. They've even got a little bureau here, a mirror in it, somewhere to put jewellery. And you can perch on the edge of the bed and use that. They've got the little cutout there. So that works really nicely. And there's also a good size separate shower cubicle with its own skylight to draw natural light down into the bathroom. That just leaves us with the master suite, which is amidships and down this little lobby area, a couple of steps down into the cabin itself. But then as you walk in on the right hand side, you have the ensuite. Now this is private. Again, it's a really good size. There's a nice bit of storage underneath the sink. There's storage behind the mirrors as well. Separate shower cubicle, and you've got a big window, obviously smoked, and there's a blind. Uh, and then you've got some ventilation from a porthole. But yeah, that's, that's really nicely appointed, as is the main cabin itself. I step down into it. Again, headroom is six foot two, six foot three in here. Really, really nicely finished. Again, the detailing really stands out. The artificial lighting. You've got those massive hole windows either side. We're struggling to see them now because it's gone dark, but again, they really make a difference in the day. And again, you've got storage peppered along the top here. You've got storage down either side of the bed. You've got a great big hanging locker on this side, and it's actually got a bit of drawer storage in it as well. It's not just a sort of plain space. It's actually really nicely finished with suede Alcantara. They, they really have gone the extra mile to make it feel a, ho a quality product, and it does. Storage all along here, very, very good. And then you've got a bureau the other side as well, a proper one that you can sit in front of. Again, it's got the pop-up mirror, it's got storage from jewellery. It's a really nicely executed cabin. Last but not least, of course, engine room access. Now there's a few ways of getting down into the machinery space. One is through the tender garage, there's a hatch in the deck and you can clamber through. It's a bit tight and awkward, but there is a way to get in there that way. This hatch here actually in the cockpit is direct access to the end of the tender garage, the, the molded end where the bow of the dinghy would go, but there's no dinghy in there. It means you can drop quite big items straight into that void without having to open that hatch at the back. So if you want to put the fenders in there, you can lift that up, put them in there, it's really quick. And really easy but if you want to get into the engine room proper it's this hatch here in the saloon now it's a bit more fiddly than some rivals where it's literally just a you know a hatch on the gas ram you've got the top and then it's not connected you've got this insulated panel as well which has got the sound insulation on it so this is a bit fiddly compared to just lifting up a hatch but you know once it's done access is, is pretty good and you've got a nice ladder straight down and you find yourself between the engine's lights here and then okay i can stand here but it really is crouching room only when you get into the engine room itself but access is okay you've got the generator tucked over to starboard you can get around all sides of the engines easily enough you've got the fuel tanks mounted forward again you've got the access to the fuel filters and the raw water strainers is really good even if it's a bit tight you can get to everything 
really easily. There is an intrusion from the tender garage, of course there is, but it's all really nicely insula insulated. You know, these are big motors here right in the saloon. It is commendably quiet when you're going along and you can see why, because they've really gone for it with the, uh, with the insulation. Overall, it's a really tidy space. Of course, all of the stuff going on back here at the transom gets the headlines on this boat, but what I really like about it is underneath all that stuff, there's really good sound boat building going on as well. It's really well put together. The machinery space is really well organized and dynamically, it's absolutely superb. It may be bold and brave and a little bit too different for some people, but it's also very, very good.